Class.net. This is a tool that we use in almost all of our videos because it is an irreplaceable tool for game hacking. If you are not a game hacker, this is still a great tool for reversing any structures. This video is going to be a more in-depth, thorough replacement for our old Reclass video, which was for Reclass EX, which is the old version. Reclass.net is the new industry standard uh, developed by Knacker. It is a port of the original Reclass made by Drunken Cheetah, uh, converted to .NET with some new features and stuff like that. We are going to teach you how to compile reclass.net from source on GitHub, how to reverse classes using it, how to use the classes internally, and then an alternative method to using it where you use auto padding uh, for games that update frequently. Every couple of months, some new features get, get pushed to this repo. So we're gonna wanna compile this ourselves with all the new changes. So let's open git here, and we're just gonna do git clone, paste that bad boy in. And we're going to go in here and we're going to open the solution file. Once that's open, go to batch build. And we're going to select everything that's release for in release mode. Okay. So x86 and x64, only the releases. The launcher, and we don't worry about the tests. So now we're going to build it. Once this happens, we're not worried about the Linux stuff. So we just cancel. Up five succeeded, two failed, and that's fine. That's all we need. So now you go into the bin folder and you have debug and release. And what you want to do is grab these three folders and you can create a new folder anywhere. I'm just going to show you which files you need uh, for distribution. So this is going to be a reclass.net. We can paste that in here and we can go into each folder and we can delete everything that's not a DLL or an executable file because none of those things are necessary. So that's what x64 looks like. And this is what x86 is going to look like. Now you have only the files that you need for this to run. If you click the launcher, it's going to open it in x64. We are just going to run the x86 version and you're going to want to run it as administrator. Once that's open, we can close Visual Studio. We have all the latest updates and we have a salt cube running and we're going to start reversing some stuff. Now, this video is going to be based on a previous uh, video we did like usual and it's going to be the first internal hack tutorial and that you can download from this thread here. And also you can always find a fully built uh, version with the latest development build from our site. Anyways, if you download that source code, you'll get the zip. So let's extract that and we're gonna build upon this. So we can open this AC client cheat table and we're gonna get everything that we need to get started here. Once you're here, you'll notice it's got a randomized uh, window name and that's to bypass some stupid anti-cheats. That's one of the new updates uh, that you get from compiling from source. There's a couple things you can do. So you're gonna go to file and we're gonna attach to the process, AC client. We can go to settings. If you wanna make it so if you double click RC net files, you can create a file association right there. There's a couple of neat features up here. You can do process information and that will tell you all the modules that are loaded, their addresses and size, and also the sections. You can do a memory searcher as well, kind of like cheat engine, pretty cool. But the main thing we're gonna use this for is reverse engineering structure. So let's go straight to the entity object. So we have an entity object pointer. This is the uh, address with a relative offset that points to it. And this is the local player object. So we can grab the address of the object and paste it in here. And this we know is our entity. So we're gonna call that ent. If we expand this, this is runtime type information. So if this object has a virtual, a virtual function table, then you will get access to the RTTI so you can know exactly what objects you're looking at. Really useful feature. Now, if we save this and restart the game, that address is dynamic, so it's gonna change. So instead of doing that, we wanna grab our pointer and we're gonna use, we're gonna paste that in and we're gonna use the syntax for reclass. So what we do is we remove those quotes and we put this in angle brackets. Angle brackets is gonna give us the address of that module and then we're gonna wrap the whole thing in regular brackets and that's gonna give us um, it's going to dereference that pointer. So once we do that, we're now pointing at the same address we were pointing at before. So first thing we do is we go in here and we start adding bytes, right? Let's add a whole bunch of bytes so we can get a view of what we're looking at. Now, by default, it shows each address as a four byte variable, and it shows it in three different ways. The first one is a float. The second is an integer. And then the third is is the hex representation as in maybe this is the pointer. So Cheat Engine only shows everything as one type at a time when this tool shows it in three. So it makes it very easy to reverse engineer stuff. This first thing is the VTable function pointer. So if we click this change type, we can change it to VTable pointer. 
If we expand this, by default, it shows 10 Vtable functions in this array. So this is dereferenced that pointer, and now we're looking at the function pointers in that array. We can expand these, and we can actually see the assembly. So that's what that is. You can then name these functions if you want, whatever you want. And we're just going to call this uh, Vtable pointer, just so we know what we're looking at. And now we can just go down the list and start identifying things. So this appears to be our position, right? If we jump, we see the Z position moving as a float. And so we know that this is a position variable. So we can click VEC3. Now I know that this is the position of the head. So we're going to write that because this Z value is going to be higher than our Z value down here. So now we'll move our mouse around and we'll jump and we see another vector three right here. So I see two vectors there, so we can change them both to vectors. And the one right below it is our angles. This is our position, but it's the position of our body, not our um, head. So we're just going to do POS. And here is going to be angle. And we know it's the angle because we go up and it's 90, down it's negative 90, and the Z is always zero. And we're just going to keep scrolling. Let's look at 0xf8. We know that that is our health address just from having reversed the game. If you hurt yourself, you'll notice that 100 turns into a something less. So we know that's an integer, okay? So let's change it to an int, 32, and we'll call it health. If we keep scrolling down, we're going to see right here, the text representation comes right here. So we can see the name is Rake, so that's my username. But notice the first thing is a dot, okay? So that's a zero. So the first byte is a zero. So this is not aligned to a four byte address, right? We're at offset 224, but the R is at 225. So what we need to to offset this correctly is we're going to set one to a hex eight. So it's an eight bit hex value is just going to be like a padding. So that's just going to be our zero. And then this one, we can change type and we're going to change it to an ASCII text UTF eight. And we know that this is a 16 byte uh, char, okay, char array. Because if we go here and we do our name to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one representing 10, and then or zero representing 10, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we check our name. We see it cut off right after the five. So that's 15 chars for our name, and then the null terminator, right? Every every char array is going to be null terminated in that manner, or should be anyways. So this is our name. So this is an important part of this, is getting used to uh, setting up the padding correctly, because not everything is going to be aligned on four bytes, right? So now... We have this one byte here and then one byte here. And now if you see the end address, it ends with E26. We are no longer four byte, four byte aligned. So we probably want to set this to be four byte aligned again. Many different ways we can do this. Um, but you just I'm basically just going to click buttons until I start seeing four byte aligned addresses. So I'm just going to start with hex 32 and it's a D. I'm going to start with hex 16 and then I see DF. Let's just do hex 8 and I get D, E, F, and 1. So now let's just set these all back to hex 32. Because clearly that did not work. So let's do hex 8. And then this is going to be hex 13. Or hex 16, sorry. And then this is going to be hex 32. Now we are realigned. D, E, these are just whatever. And then we're back to 0, 4, 8, C, 0, 4, 8, C. So now we're back to 4 byte aligned. So this should be relatively good for our uses. Now you always want to go from the top to the bottom because what will happen is if I then start changing things in here, what if I say this is hex 16, hex 8, then all of a sudden the rest of the offsets aren't going to match and you're going to have to fix them up. It's much easier to just go top to bottom and not mess it up from the beginning. Now let's look at our weapon uh, object. So current weapon ammo is this multi-level pointer. So this is a pointer to our local object and we're going to offset 374. So let's go down to 374. And if we, it shows that this is a pointer, right? And it points to something on the heap. If you look on the far right, we see the RTTI for our weapon. So this is our weapon pointer. So we're going to right click it and change type, and we're going to change it to a pointer. And when it does that, we've now created a pointer and it points to an instance. So this is an instance of a new class that we haven't reversed yet, right? Or defined. So if we click the arrow, it's going to expand it. So this is a pointer that points to this address. We now see the first address in this structure is this address. So it's basically just dereferencing the pointer. So let's name this. This is going to be called weapon. So that's the, that's the class name. The name of our pointer is going to be current weapon. Okay. 
Now we just all we're gonna want to do here is get our weapon ammo. So offset 14 is a pointer to another object. So if we go down to offset 14 and hover over it, that pointer points to an address which has integer 23 as its value. That's the number of ammo in our clip. So we're gonna define this as a pointer. Change type pointer. Now we can't just do an integer pointer in reclass.net. In the old reclasses, you could do that, but it's not that difficult to do, okay? So we're just gonna right click this and we're gonna change the type to an integer, int32. And this is gonna be ammo, it's gonna be the name of that variable. This class is gonna be called, you can call it whatever you want, we're just gonna call it ammo pointer, or we're gonna call it uh, ammo in clip, and then this is gonna be called ammo pointer. We can select all these and right click remove node. We don't care about any of these things either, so we can do the same thing. And now we can, we're done with that class, so we can shrink it down and we can delete everything else. We don't care about anything else, it's fine. So now we have our weapon ammo pointer, our name, our position, and our health, right? So everything's defined here, we can now save our table. And now we're gonna open our Visual Studio project. It's just a pretty simple project which has uh, ammo, health, and recoil hack. And down here you'll see we get our local player pointer and we modify the health and the ammo. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna use reclass. So the beauty of reclass where the real magic happens is when you do generate C++ code. So now we have code that we can copy and paste and we can use it directly in our source. So we'll just go in and paste this at the top. And first thing is vector is not going to compile. So we need to do a struct vector three and it's gonna be float x, y, x, y, z. And now that will work. If we just click F7 to see if this compile, it will not. The reason is because of these static assert lines. So basically um, all different compilers may have different sizes for each variable type. So he's added this into the generation of the C code so that if you're using a weird compiler that it will detect that the variable size is incorrect because let's say a char or a int32 underscore t has a different size than what he's using, then the static assert is gonna happen during compilation to warn you that your padding is probably not gonna work. So in this case, all we need to do is right click project properties and go to uh, C++ language standard, and we're just gonna change it to latest uh, the 17 version. And now it should compile fine. So now let's modify this DLL to use our new classes. We're gonna change the local player pointer to an ent pointer, and we're gonna change this to a local player, because it's no longer gonna be a pointer, okay? And then we can change uint pointer to ent pointer, okay? But this is a pointer to our entity, not the entity's address exactly. So normally what you would do is you would do uint pointer underscore t, you would cast it to a pointer, you would dereference it, and then you would cast that to an entity pointer, okay? And so this will get the correct address, but that's kind of dumb. Instead, we're just gonna do ent pointer pointer, and that's just gonna dereference it basically like twice to get us to here. It's only really dereferencing it once, but then it's casting it to an end pointer again so that it matches this type. So it's doing a dereference once, but to get it into that type, that's what we do. So now we can go down here and instead of that line, we can just do local player health equals 1337. See how much easier that is? No crazy casting and adding of offsets. That's why reclass is so awesome. Again, we can do the same thing here. We can just knock all that off and we're just gonna do local player, uh, current weapon and ammo pointer equals one, three, three, seven. And because this is a weird thing we did here, we need to do uh, that. Yep, there we go. So now we can compile that and inject. So now we'll inject that. And now we should click numpad one and two and we have unlimited ammo and health. So it works perfectly fine. We can now click end to eject our DLL because of this part right here. So now I'm gonna show you another method with using auto padding. So if we go to this thread, uh, Public Void shared this. Uh, it's originally from CAN1357 from UC. It's basically an auto padding method because this works great for games that don't update, right? because these offsets are always gonna be the same. It can work fine for structures that don't update as well. Maybe your game updates a lot, but they don't update certain structures. Then you can use the reclass, that's fine, no big deal. But for a game like CSGO, if you're trying to get like the health offset and stuff, this is not good because they update a couple times per week, right? And the offsets change. So that's where this auto padding feature comes into play. 
So let's copy that and let's put that at the top and we're just going to modify our functions. Let's go back to that thread and grab this line with the union, okay? And so under public, we're just going to create this union and we are going to paste in this line several times. And so basically it's the type, the name of the variable, and then the offset. So we're going to do POS head is going to be a vector and it's going to be 0x4, the offset's right here. We can do POS, which is offset 0x34. And we have uh, angle, which is 0x40. We have health, which is 0xf8. So let's just skip name for this part and we're going to do a weapon pointer called current weapon. And that's going to be offset 0x374. And now we can get rid of all this. We don't care about these. We can get rid of them at this point. And now we'll just get rid of our static asserts because we're no longer using the original reclass uh, method, right? And weapon and ammo clip needs to be up here. And now we need to do the same thing for weapon, right? So grab that. And in here, we're going to do ammo clip, ammo pointer. And that's going to be 0x14. Now we're going to wipe this out. And in fact, we're going to assign this as an int pointer, right? We don't need a second level of like indirection here because we're not using the original reclass method. And we just need to add semicolons right after the union here. And now that IntelliSense warning should go away. Now we can go and modify this, okay? So let's go down to our local player. Health, that's fine. But down here, we changed how this works. So we'll just remove this. Current weapon ammo pointer and we just need to add a dereference right there now that should compile let's inject again and now numpad one and two we should add unlimited ammo let's grab a grenade and make sure unlimited health works as well and it works fine if you're too close to the grenade it'll actually auto kill you regardless of how much damage it does it'll just do max damage so make sure you're not too close or it'll look like the hack doesn't work so there you go those are the four ways of using reclass that i wanted to teach you and hopefully this tutorial will be an excellent replacement for our old one i really hope you enjoyed this video again guidedhacking.com slash donate patreon.com slash guidedhacking Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.